morning and welcome to Southern Sports Network. I am Lindsay Sotomayor. And I'm Zach Smith, here to fill you in on the latest Moccasin Sports News. The men's basketball team faced a minor setback last week when they lost in a close game to Eckerd, 84-72. This placed our boys 5-10 in the SSC and 10-17 overall. Dominique Williams managed to put up 20 points in that game, but it just wasn't enough. The Mocs finished their regular season play last Saturday night when they hosted Nova Southeastern at home. Senior guard Dylan Travis scored 20 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 steals. Junior guard Sheldon Zablotny scored 27 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 steals. The Mocs trailed for most of the game, but pulled up close in the last half. Nova Southeastern would pull away at the end, beating the Mocs 90-84. The team will now enter the Sunshine State Conference Men's Basketball Tournament as the number eight seed and travel to face number one seed, Barry, tonight. The women's basketball team faced off against Eckerd College last Wednesday. Sophomore Jensen Blasage led the team with 20 points and Anya fuse Robiton followed with 18. Mariah Harris earned her 600th rebound of her career, but only scored five of the points in the game. At the end of the first quarter, the Mocs trailed by a few points, but soon took the lead and stayed there for the rest of the game, defeating the Tritons 67-62. Senior night was Saturday, and the Mocs faced Nova Southeastern. By halftime, the Mocs were ahead, and they kept the lead with a tight defense and constant scoring. The Lady Mocs sealed the deal with an amazing score of 63-60. The girls faced Rollins at home tonight in the quarterfinals of the Sunshine State Conference. Moccasins men's lacrosse had a winning weekend as they defeated Mars Hill 12-6 on Friday. In the game, junior attacker Cody Dyer had a season-high four goals. They fired a season-high... 59 shots on goal and netted 11 in Saturday's victory against Lennar Ryan. Junior attacker Cody Dyer scored a big game tying goal in the second quarter and after that there was no looking back for the Mocs as they went on to win the game 11 to 6. You can catch the Mocs next Thursday in Bryant Stadium at 1 o'clock as they take on Chestnut Hill. This past weekend the Lady Mocs softball team continued conference play in a three game series against Rollins. In Friday night's game the Mocs fell 5 to 3 to the Tarts despite a three run inning in the fifth. On Saturday, the ladies lost both games. The first game had a final score of 7-3. The Mocs tied the game after falling behind 3-0, but couldn't find any more runs after that. In the second game, it had a final score of 2-1. The Mocs scored in the bottom of the second after Sidney Koch singled to bring in the runner on third base. The Tars took the lead in the fifth and didn't look, relinquish it. The team's record now stands with eight wins, five losses, and one tie. The baseball team played three games against Lynn this past weekend. The boys fought hard but came up short on Friday with a final score of 11-8. But the team wasn't going down without a fight. In the second game, Sam Machonis hit his second home run of the season in the bottom of the third inning, scoring two to take a 3-1 lead. Unfortunately, the team didn't rally quite enough and lost both games Saturday, 11-9 and 8-5. Our baseball team took on the Detroit Tigers Monday in an exhibition game at Joker Martian Stadium. Sammy Paul covered the game for us. Every year, the FSC baseball team takes on the Detroit Tigers in an exhibition game to open up the spring training season. This year, the game was a good one. The Mocs kept it close through most of the game. I always hope you can win, but we actually played really good. I mean, it was a lot closer than a lot of people expected, but at the same time, I mean, we played a good game and we thought we did. Um, we almost deserved to win, but, you know. The Tigers took the lead in the first inning, but FSC answered with a run of their own off a single by junior Mitch Reeves. The Mox pitching held the game in a tie until the fourth inning, when the Tigers took a 2-1 to -one lead. But a couple innings later, the Mox answered again. This time, it was a home run by senior Sam Machonis to tie the game at two. That's uh, definitely something I'll never forget. It was, I mean, I just got a good pitch to hit, and I put the barrel on it, and I, I knew I hit it well, but I wasn't completely sure it was going to be a home run, and then I saw it go to the fence, and it was almost a sign of relief. It just felt really good. The game stayed tied until the Tigers pulled ahead in the seventh inning and stayed in the lead for the remainder of the game. The final score was Tigers 7, Mox 2. Reporting for Southern Sports Network, I'm Sammy Paul. I had the privilege of interviewing head coach Lance Necro following the game to discuss the rest of the season and what the game against the Tigers meant for the team. 
Hey guys, today I have with me Coach Lance Negro from the baseball team. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. All, All right. right. So to get this started, uh, let's talk about the game against the Tigers. So is that a game you look forward to, even though it's an ex exhibition game? Yeah, we look forward to it. Um, you know, the guys get a big kick out of it. You know, m maybe one or two uh, will get a chance to, to do that later in, you know, in, the, in professional baseball. But for the majority of the guys, they're, that's the closest they're going to get. So it's a lot of fun for them. Uh, there's no pressure, you know, we're not putting on signs during the game. I just tell them just go out and have fun, <laughs> mingle with, uh, mingle with, you know, the guys from the Tigers if they get a chance to, and just, just go out and relax and have fun. Now, what was your reaction to the game? It was pretty close <coughs> there for a while. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You go into it expecting to lose. Uh, you know, you don't think you're going to win, but then, you know, two to two in the seventh and we give up the lead, and then you're a little frustrated because you give up the lead. But, you know, it was, it's fun. Um, you know, it's just... Like I said, it's just it's just so much fun for those guys to get a chance to do it and kind of get away from uh, the pressure of a normal game. Like you said, it's an exhibition, so they can go out and just have no pressure on themselves. Okay, so your record's eight and six right now. So what are you looking to improve <coughs> on for the rest of the season? Uh, you know, we were doing really well until last weekend. We were eight and three, uh, number nine in the country. Uh, we got swept by Lynn. Um, you know, I think pitching pitching's always the biggest thing, um, which. You know, we've been throwing the ball really well up until the, uh, until this past weekend. So once we get back on track um, on, on that side, you know, I, I know our offense will continue to keep hitting the ball and we'll keep scoring runs. So once our pitching gets back on track, which I know it will, uh, then I think we're going to be fine. Okay. And now you start off a home series against Notre Dame of Ohio tomorrow, actually, and then you have quite <coughs> a few games at home down the road. So how are you going to use that to your advantage? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a home field advantage, you know, especially in Division Two. It's not like you're putting, you know, 50,000 people in the stands that are all cheering for you. So uh, I think the best part of it is just not, not having to travel. Um, some of these northern teams, it's an advantage for us. They're, you know, we're 14 games in. Some of them haven't played, uh, you know, maybe a handful of games, if any at all. So, you know, it's definitely an advantage uh, for us to be, you know, have a couple weeks of games under our belt. But as far as home field advantage, I really don't think there's any. Uh, but it is nice to, you know, we had a long trip to Mount Olive two weeks ago, you know, 11, 12 hour bus ride. So it's nice to uh, just to be at home for a couple weeks. All right. And what are you looking forward to most this season with Mark? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the conference is going to pan out. Uh, I think we have a really good chance to compete for the conference and to move on to regionals and hopefully for a national championship. So uh, we've got a really good team, a good group of guys, you know, just on and off the field, both you know, academically we're doing really well, um, a good group of guys in the locker room. And, you know, I hope that translates to uh, playing on the field. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks today. for having me. All right, back to the show. On Thursday, FSC's men's tennis team took on the 25th ranked school, Flagler College. The Mock's number two ranked doubles team, Jose Desario and Brian Slavonic, beat Flagler team 9-7. to seven. This was FSC's only doubles point, giving the Flagler Saints a lead going into singles. The Saints defeated the Mocs 6-3. Last Friday, the men's tennis team took on Alabama Huntsville, defeating them 7-2. Jose Desario and Brian Slavonic achieved their second consecutive win, and Laurent Mayu won at the number three spot when he posted a 62 and 64 wins in his singles match. The Mox won overall 7-2 over Alabama Huntsville. They continue their success on the road this weekend. They squared up against West Alabama on Saturday and Mississippi College on Sunday. They had a great day Saturday, finishing 8-1. and one. Juniors Fabian Lundberg and Jose Desario led the team to victory. Lundberg at the number one position, won 7-5 and 6-4, and Desario put it away at the number two position. After losing this first set 2-6, he bounced back and won 6-2 and 6-4. Sunday, the team took on Mississippi College and kept their winning streak alive. They beat Mississippi College 7-2 with the help of sophomore Brian Slavonic closing out the weekend with the final singles win. As all Mox fans should know by now, our men's and women's swim swimming teams are the SSC champions. Sammy Paul got an inside look at their practice as they prepare for nationals. Florida Southern's men and women's swim teams made a splash at the Sunshine State Conference Championships February 18th to 21st. Both teams came out on top claiming the conference title. Uh, I think this was just a special group of kids. We had um, six senior women and five senior men, so it just makes it a little special for them to go out on top. This was the fourth consecutive conference championship for the men. Senior Jesus Marine has been with the team for three out of the four wins. It was amazing. Uh, we went through a tough battle against uh, really good teams, but we were prepared for 
the for the for the meat and uh, we we just battled, we just uh, fought a lot and we just uh, got the results we wanted. While the men celebrated their fourth conference win, the women celebrated their first in school history. The guys have won three years in a row and we've always come up short, so it was really nice to win this year all together. The mock's next challenge is the four-day NCAA Division II National Finals. Blum said the team is right back in the water. And you know, it's just cleaning up some details that we think we can be better in, and then we'll, we'll see if we can race a little tough when we get there. The swimmers, however, have a more relaxed approach heading into the national meet. I think this year, we're just going to focus on having fun, because that's when we will swim the best. I'm Sammy Paul, reporting for Southern Sports Network. Thank you all for joining us this morning. I'm Zach Smith. And I'm Lindsay Sotomayor. This has been Southern Sports Network. See you next week.